audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The Roman Emperor Arcadius had an intense hatred for one of the church leaders of that time called John Chrysostom. He called his counsellors together and said, How can I hurt this man? One suggested, Banish him to a desert. That won't hurt him, said the emperor. He'll only use that time to draw close to God. Then confiscate his goods, said another. That won't hurt him, said the emperor. That'll hurt the poor. Put him in prison, suggested another. No, he'll just use that time interceding for the church. Put him to death then, counseled another. No, that would be instant heaven for this man. Then one man stepped forward and said, If you really want to hurt this man, get him to sin. There's nothing he hates more than sin. How true that is. There's nothing a true Christian hates more than sin. That's because sin is totally inconsistent with the new nature we receive when we are born again. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Hello and welcome to Set Free with Ken Legg and I'm Phil Edwards. And this week we're looking at the subject of God's way of sanctification. And it's a good point that Ken has just raised. I'm not saying that a Christian doesn't sin, but a Christian can never feel good about sin. And our subject is God's way of sanctification. So what is God's way of victory over sin then, Ken? Well, we're going to look at that throughout the remainder of this week, Phil. Um, but before we do, I think it's important to look at some of the incorrect ways of dealing with sin. Now, I've been a pastor for 38 years and I've witnessed many wrong ways of trying to deal with sinful behavior. In fact, I've got to confess that I've tried most of them myself. <laughs> uh, for example, there's what I call the crisis experience approach. Okay, here it goes. Uh, you've got a need. Maybe you're, you're struggling with anger. So the pastor says, if you've got a problem with anger, come to the front and we will pray for you. And supposedly, you know, this sort of prayer at the front will bring about a crisis in your life and you'll be forever free. You'll be set free from anger for the rest of your life. Well, we don't need a crisis experience to get free of sin's power. Uh, We don't need a power encounter. What we need actually is a truth encounter. Now, the truth is this, that his divine power has already given to us everything we need for life and godliness. That's what Peter says. So we don't need to go and get something, have a crisis experience at the front of the church or a power encounter with God. We've got all the power we need. So we need to learn the truth rather than have uh, a, a fresh infilling of power to deal with this problem of anger. It's interesting that Scripture says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It doesn't say you will know how to respond to an altar call or have somebody else pray for you or otherwise. Yeah. It's the truth. I think many of us have gone down that road but like you say, there's you know no crisis experience that's going to set us free from sin once and for all. As long as we live in, in this body and we'll encounter temptation for sin, that's the truth. And there's no one cure to deal with the power of sin forever. It would be nice if there was, but the reality is that there isn't. That's right. Um, here's another couple of ways that people have tried to uh, get free of sin. Um, cast out the demon. <laughs> mm. I'm sure you've heard that one. Every problem is a mm. demon. So let's go back to the anger. You've got a you've got a spirit of anger, or if your problem is pride, you've got a spirit of pride. Or if your spirit is, your problem is lust, you've got an unclean spirit. And so, cast out the demon. You won't have that problem anymore. Come uh, out, spirit of chocolate. I've even heard that one. And really? You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is your oh. name? Cadbury. Come out, Cadbury. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, uh, it's it's not the f- it's not a demon. It's the flesh. Yeah. You know, th- these are the works of the flesh. Yeah. Uh, and you can't cast out the flesh. Here's another one. Uh, we believe. Okay, we know it's the flesh. It's not a demon. So let's afflict ourselves. Let's really beat up on the flesh. Let's do things like flagellate the body or or fast for a long period of time. Let's try to um, starve the flesh. But mm. one thing we discover is that whatever you give focus to, you give strength to. So the more you focus on the flesh and how to overcome it, you're actually strengthening the flesh and you're giving attention to it and it's it's becoming more prominent. That's just so common, so, so typical with so many things. You know, We think this is the answer, but it's actually the opposite in the spiritual sense. I guess what you're saying is, you know, you can't cast out of things out of the flesh, and you can't starve things out of, you know, out either. Is that right? That's right. Here's another one, Phil. Um, and I've got to say that I kind of went down this road for for a while because it sounds so subtle. Um, you, you know, we can 
when we're struggling with an issue, we say, oh, well, just let go and let God. Mm, heard that from I can't before. do it. Only God can do it. And until he does it, then I'm powerless. Now, when you think about that, that means, it, let's say I've got a problem with anger. We use that one. Okay, we stick with that one. Um, it means that every time I blow a mistake, every time I, I lose my cool with someone, mm. it's not my fault. It's God's fault. He, he hasn't dealt with my anger problem yet. And so really blame him because I've just got to wait uh, until he does. But the Bible says this, that he's dealt with it, actually. He's dealt with sin's power. Sin shall not have dominion over us because you're now under grace. So, for example, when God says don't steal, don't lie, don't carry grudges, etc., it's because we have the power not to do those things. Otherwise, God would be mocking us. See, if all I had to do was to leave it to God, then every exhortation to Christian living would be a waste of time. But Paul actually says, work out your own salvation because it's God who works in you. And we know we can only work out what God has worked in. But everything we need for life and godliness is something that he has worked in us, and so we work it out. Let's get practical here for a minute, though, Ken. Go back to your blowing your stack scenario. Yeah. So let's say you're, you're saying, yes, I have the power to overcome this. God is in me giving me the power to overcome this. Yet I continue to blow my stack, and then I feel like a failure. Yeah. What do you do? Well, I think you've got to realize another truth, and that is while we're on this journey, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Otherwise, you get discouraged. Uh, God knew about our problem of anger. I say our because it looks like we've both got the same problem. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Don't don't you push it too far. (laughs) God knew about our problems, whatever they are, when he saved us. And so... You know, he knows it's a journey. Uh, it's a lifetime journey, and and we're growing in grace from grace to grace, from glory to glory, mm. by the Spirit of God. But there's no condemnation as we journey there. Mm. And there's probably another truth in there too: is sometimes things take time. God takes longer than what we might expect sometimes. And thank God we live in this capsule of time because uh, God has a purpose in that, and that is our sanctification. Mm. Is yeah. there uh, another one? Look, one of the most common things that I'm finding more and more in in the Christian church is moralizing. Morality focuses on just stopping certain sins. Morality just tells you to stop behaving in a certain way. You know, a Christian shouldn't do this. The Bible says don't do that, Mm. and so on. Now, Christianity is different to morality. It's not just stopping something and leaving it there. Because Jesus told that parable about the house. You know, if a house is uh, full of demons and it's swept clean, but it remains empty, then what's going to happen? Those demons are going to come back back, and fill the house, and the last state will be worse than the first. So what he's saying is you can't just stop sinning and nothing else. That's morality. The world tries to do that. You know, and uh, God's way of change is not by moralizing on people or, you know, telling them to shape up. Let me just read something to you from. uh, Paul's letter to the Colossians, because they were they were making that mistake. They picked up on some of the philosophy of the world, which was very similar. He says, if you die with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why as though living in the world do you subject yourself to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men. Now these things indeed, he says, have an appearance of wisdom, in self-imposed religion, false humility and neglect of the body, but they are actually of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. In other words, it doesn't work just telling people, don't do this and don't do that. Mm. See, God hasn't given us law. He's given us life, and that's the big difference. In in the world, you'll get a lot of behavior modification, uh, you know, sort of uh, rules and regulations, if you like, but we haven't been given law. We've been given life. He that has the Son has the life. And that's why Paul says, you know, work out your own salvation because God's worked something into you. And understand what He's worked into you. Understand what this life of Christ is that He's given to you. Discover what He's deposited in your life and let there be an outworking of that in your life. Now, Phil, that's what we're going to talk about in in the next couple of days. Our series this week is on God's way of sanctification and we'll have more for you tomorrow. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book This Is The Life, which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.